I just wanted to bring him to the podcast because his story is actually pretty inspirational. He, maybe like eight months ago, you were making like 1K a month uh, writing. And now it's like you're hitting 30K plus months. And for your clients, you're making like 250K a month for your clients. And I'm like, yeah, this is fun. Let's um, yeah. let, let's just, let's just uh, riff because if there, there's this one thing that unites us, I feel, it's uh we I was a ghostwriter, you are a ghostwriter, and we both kind of just don't like other ghostwriters. I, <laughs> so I hate other ghostwriters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's gonna be a few of the things we talk about, but um yeah. Marcos, welcome to the show. I wanna start with uh, the question you asked me to ask you, which is Marcos, how does one write a thread that makes money? Yeah. You know, it's funny, it's it's like a, I think the common misconception with uh with the threads is they think that there's like some sort of framework, mental model, et cetera, that's gonna make the money from the thread. Like if they, it's almost like, I uh, remember the meme you sent me, the tactic hunter, the yeah, tactic the hunter. hunter. Like if this had an editor, it would be on the screen. Like te the tactic hunter, like people think that there's some sort of tactic that's gonna make the money with the, vir with the, with the viral threads, um, but it's not. The, ta the tactic hunter is like um, when you're like, you feel like one thing is going to change everything. You assume that yeah. every little action you have has infinite leverage. So you yeah. say, I sent out one DM and I'm not making money, but I sent it with the tactic you told me, Marcos. Why is it not making money? Right? That, that is a tactic hunter, the one that right. just tries yeah. new new things over and over again and never sticks yeah. to anything. It reminds me, I was just watching the, uh, the Horm it was like a Hormosi clip and he was saying how he, when he was growing up, he just, he kept thinking that somebody knew something that he didn't, but that was never it. Right, it was, it, it was genuinely just doing like the basic obvious shit that we always say, but like for beginners and like you don't know, it's easy to say when you're after you're not a beginner anymore, but as a beginner, the biggest barrier is getting through that. Like you genuinely just have to do like the, the typical thing. Um, yeah. And back to your question for like the threads, it's, it's not about how you write the thread, it's about what the thread says. Um, and I've realized this actually like the last few weeks really, um, like I can't make a client special, like no matter what I do, like I can write the most, the coolest, but the best possible framework and the most proven templates. Um, I can't make them special. So I can't make them money if they don't have a good product and I can't make them money if they're not a successful person. So like, which is why we turn away so many people. Uh, it's just cause like for us, we've, we've been even working on like a process to verify that the person is who they say they are. Like, if you're selling a course, and this is this goes back to me hating ghostwriters, right? Because every ghostwriter hits 10K a month and then they sell a course on how to hit 10K a month. I hate that because I've been through so many shitty courses. And one of the good ones, for example, was uh, you had like a low ticket program, right? Like low ticket, low ticket program. Right. I joined it, but you had 10X the results that I was looking for, right? You had done 75K in a month on ghostwriting. I would have been happy with 7k <laughs> so i was like that is that should be like that general rule of thumb so for us to even accept somebody is like if you're going to sell a course on e-com you have to have created an e-commerce brand or store that has done tons mm. of money if you're going to promise people that you can get them to six figures you better damn have gotten to seven figures right like i'm not working with anybody who gets to six figures and then teaches people six figures right because they could have gotten lucky and they could be lying like there's so many things so for the viral thread, the answer is that you have to actually have good results. And that's why for me, if you go to my profile, like my threads now are just like us flexing results. And even my threads for my clients are just like, a lot of times it's just flexing their story and like flexing results. Even if I it's told you, I told you this on the call, remember yesterday, I thought, and like, um, I told you guys like, Marcus, don't take this personally, but like this video you posted has like zero value and it's all flexing results. And you're like, yeah. That's the point. Like this is why I did it. Can you can you, all right, can you disclose what the like what the thread was and kind of what the video was so people can see and how much money it made? I think that's relevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're talking about the video of the three minute the case study, the hundred case case study. Yeah. So I did a hundred k a month case study. It was for a client that did a hundred k a month. This was like early. This was like my first time a client hit a hundred k a month. Um, so I instantly just wrote up a, like a four or five page document on how they hit 100K a month. Um, I didn't give away, like what, what, what you would think when you click it, the, the clickbait is that you think I'm giving you all the tactics and all the strategies and all of this stuff, but it's actually just a ploy 
to spam results and, and analytics and, and screenshots of spreadsheets and like all of the numbers for, cause it's made for the ideal client. And what I've realized, especially as an agency owner is when you post, um, the kind of strategy stuff, the only people that are actually caring about the actual tactics are the people who are trying to beat you and copy you. Right. right. <laughs> Your actual ideal client does not give a fuck about anything other than the result. So like that was that click with me. Yeah, especially with you, like people don't just don't don't have the time. One time I was I had a I ran this two week challenge. I thought I was a genius for running it. It was just a complete failure. But it was a two week challenge in which I was just going to personally coach uh, 20 people into closing the, their next client. Right. And it, it ended up me being on nine calls, just hating every single minute of those calls. But during that, one thing came cool. Well, it came came across. So uh, a ghostwriter asked me. Another ghostwriter is like, what do you think about the content? And I go over his content and one of his most popular tweets or one of the recent tweets was, I'm so happy I finally got made enough money to quit my job ghostwriting. I'm like, dude, don't post that. You can't yeah. do that. Like, imagine what would a client feel, right? If he, you hire somebody and then that somebody posts, I just closed my first client. I'm so excited. Right. Like, uh fuck so bad like, like yeah give me a refund i don't want i that. tweeted i've been i've been tweeting this since like november october i was like building public is so stupid <laughs> like i've never found something more stupid than building public and documenting your journey and i get like the gary v thing where it's like what do you mean yeah I, uh, what do you mean? I i think it's so i think it's so dumb like if you're using social media as a client acquisition source right and that's the caveat right if you're using so if you're not using social media to get clients then so be it, document your journey, I don't care. If you're using social media to get clients, don't document your journey, don't build in public. Your, your social media is strictly to get clients, so you need to be tweeting and putting out content of what your clients would want to see. Their pain points, dreams, fears, et cetera, the, the four quadrants or whatever, yeah. you, you made me do it like a year ago. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but that, people so, will be like, like for everybody's listening, it's like frustrations and then you list the frustrations and then play it out over a year. Those are their fears. And then you flip the frustrations, play it over a year, uh, flip it. And that's the ones play it out over a year. And that's the, that's the dream outcome. So if you make content around those four things, uh, it tends to be, it, it tends to hit really hard, but you can go up. Yeah. It's, it's like the, the whole building public thing. It's like. I saw a guy like, oh, we just hit like 1K MRR, like just closed a client, like getting up, going to the gym, like great. But how is that going to get you clients, right? And like do as I say, not as I do, right? Because I'm like, I'm at the point now where like I, most of my clients come from referrals. So I, I get to do whatever the fuck I want, right? <laughs> it's like at the time and like when you're in the mixer for like the first six months in business, when you're using Twitter for like all of your clients, it's just like, Tweet what they want to see, and I've gotten better at this. I was doing um, a research doc, market research doc the other day, because um, I'm redoing my VSL, and he, he was telling me like I would say something like, for example, I was like, oh, um, statistics that the online education industry is growing, right? Because I work with online education companies and, and, and gurus and course course creators. Um, he was like, well, why would they care? And I was like. Good point. They don't. They already started the online education business. They don't care that the industry is growing. Right. <laughs> that right. would just be for me to be like trying to like get an airhead and thinking like, oh my right. god, you it's know like, what I mean? It's so, like the it's like the fitness coach that posts about how to improve the form of your deadlift. It's like, bro, your ideal prospect doesn't go to the gym. He doesn't care about the form of a deadlift. Right. You know? Yeah. Like he, exactly. Yeah. He cares about do, doing the thing. Like, yeah. How to? I don't know. Yeah, unless you're like a power board. lifter. Yeah, if you're a power lifting coach, like a strength that coach for like yeah. professional athletes, then yes. But if you're trying to get like 25 to 35 year old men that hate their nine to five and are skinny fat, like they don't care about the form of the deadlift. They care about not being skinny fat. So you need to post right. things about, you just need to post either results or actionable advice that's going to get them in your DM just enough. I have, um, a, I have a story about this. I want to share this story. So. Uh, it's one about like learning to really understand your target market and speaking their language. John was in a call the other day, you know, John, and he mentioned that a lot of his clients had this recurring thing. So he's like a sleep coach and like sleep, gut health, like health coach. And a lot of his clients had the same issue that they were waking up at one, between 1 and 3 a.m. And like 
for some reason, all of his clients had that. And then he tweeted about how if you're waking up between 1 and 3 a.m., it's because of these issues. And then right below, like, like the tweet got like 1,800 likes. It went, it went crazy, right? And below, he said, like, if you have sleep issues, DM me sleep. And then he just flexed on everybody on the call. Like, that was like right after yours. He just flexed on everybody, just like 70 inbound DMs from that one specific tweet to your pain point. Mm. Which, by the way, talking about how you wake up between 1 and 3 a.m., it got him more leads than giving them a whole list of value on how to sleep better. You know, so to me, that was, that was interesting. It, it's like people really want to feel more understood Right then, then learn things. They they don't want info. They kind of want just like that little emotional yeah. comfiness in order to like DM you. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, and like the biggest thing for me has been, especially for me, is like a you know I put out a, we put out a ton of volume, like we're putting out you know thousands of threads per quarter, right? So it's a ton of content. How many <laughs> threads do you write? Like how many threads do you post for a client every month? Every day. 30, you, you write a thread a day for your clients? Every day, yes. Do you juice every single one? Every day is juiced. Every day. We're the best. <laughs> yeah, that's, not the only piece of, that's not the only piece of content. It's multiple pieces of content per day. So, okay, so can you, what, what's your content strategy? Can you disclose? Yeah, I don't mind. Um, yeah, I don't mind. I'm the best. Three to four, yeah, three to four posts per day. Um, with, with one of those being some uh, some sort of thread or, or big piece. Um, we retweet our own tweets and like we do kind of the whole shebang with with uh, automation. Um, That's the content, auto DM? Sorry, yeah, auto DM, but also like um, auto retweet, auto plug, like we do all of the, all of the basic stuff. Um, the caveat is there's a split, right? And this is what I was get, alluding to is that um, you know, the pain points and the fears and the desires is great, but at some point you have to balance that with growth. And there's, you know, there's a secret sauce here. Like you can have, if you have a hundred followers, right. And you are like a B to B, you need to get some followers. Like you need followers. It's like, guess what? You're just going to be talking to a wall. <laughs> like if you have a hundred followers and you tweet, right. you know, results, 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 but you have no, only no followers, so you're not talking to anybody, and nobody follows you. So, like, you don't have a JK following you, you don't have a Marcos following you, because who follows you matters, right? A lot. A lot. Yeah. So, like, yeah. I, and this is like for me too. Like, a lot of people don't understand. Like, 500 followers with a hundred of those being notables is huge. Is much better than having 5,000 followers with no notables. And I call them notables. It's like pretentious. It's just people who have a name in the industry because people just want, they just, it's like having a, it's like having a blue check mark. It's like having a hundred blue check marks, right? If I go to Jacob Molina's po, uh, profile, it says 150 people, you know, follow him. It's like 150 verifications, right? right? It's like, it's, it's like if you go to a party and then it's like, there's a, there's a really popular people and the people who hang out with them are like, Oh yeah, of course they're cool. Right. Of course they're cool too. If I like that guy. I'm probably gonna like this other guy. So yeah, I did an auto DM, um, and you guys can look it up. It was it was in the hook was no cringe hook. I was like, I'm gonna do something different and see. It. I'm gonna split test it. I'm like, no cringe hook, just reply and you'll get access to this video, and it, it totally flopped. And what that showed me was that uh, there are proven templates of for like auto DMs that will go viral and that will get you consistent results, 500 to a thousand likes. Um, stop trying to be edgy and being like, oh my, like I see this all the time, especially from like the sales bros in this industry who are actually so cringe, but like, they're like, oh, like auto DM. So cringe. Like do I grew without stupid giveaways. Like this goes, I could go on forever about this. Like people, there's also people who are like, ah, it's all organic. I grew with organic only and no paid. I'm like, did you make more money from it? Like you're going to get paid the same if you pay for the traffic or get the organic yeah. traffic. Like. Nobody says like you don't say that like in a higher level. Nobody cares how you got there. Do play the game by the rules. Like I see too many people on Twitter right now, like trying to be edgy and trying to go against the grain. They want to do things differently. Like I don't even care about followers because as long as I'm not cringe, I'm like, bro, like you know, it's not. Why don't you check notifications? Sorry. 
like what do you check notifications yeah why do you yeah know how, why do you know how many followers you have yeah but like about being cringe and, and um not not cringe but like having having the templates we're not in good terms right now but th this guy david said one of the wisest things i've ever heard about marketing ever like he said uh write the best content ever on twitter and use the dirtiest techniques to sell it and I thought that was a pretty, pretty, pretty good approach as in like writing the, like the baitiest thread hooks, right? But like making your thing excellent. Yes. If you look at, if you, if you look at Hormozzi's stuff, right? Like his videos, bro, like, and spe specifically, I enjoy 2021 Hormozzi. Personally, I, I think those videos are like the best ever. The more but technical like, stuff before he went, he went exactly. Broad. Yeah, he had exactly. to go broad eventually. And, but like uh, his, his thumbnails, are pretty clickbaity. Like, if you don't know anything about Alex and you only see the thumbnails from that, it's like, is this just like another like car guru, right? Another Lambo guru? But then, right? right? It's like the you, they get they get you really attracted with like the the quote unquote like thumb like baity techniques, but they show you the best things ever. And I feel like that's a that's a pretty good philosophy. It's counterintuitive, like that. but it's good. I like that. You, I feel like we yeah, kind of. I kind of, yeah, no, I like that a lot. I was about to write it down, but I'm just like, um, I feel like we kind of live by that. Like we go like for everyone, like we're very cringe with our, with our, with our hooks and with our, it's very baby. Like we were, we are optimizing for engagement at all times. But uh, the caveat is that all of our clients have killer products, right? Killer products. So I'm okay right. with that. Right. Like, and this, and you know, a lot of people, I have a I have a really good friend. I, I told you about him, right? He's his name's Don. He's pretty big on YouTube, and he has a course, right? He never plugs it ever, never, ever, ever plugs his course. I have to go into. He has a live stream on YouTube where he gets like two thousand concurrent viewers. Which, if you don't know anything about the business world, that's a fuck ton. That's probably like the most in the industry. Um, I go in there and I'll just like spam the link to his course. I'm like, promote it. Like, you have a moral responsibility to sell your course. If you have a good course, if your course does not suck because the industry is filled with shitty courses. So if you have a good one and you're not selling it, you're doing more harm by not marketing it. They think they're doing harm by marketing. Like I don't want to, I don't want to force people to buy. I don't want to be cringe. I don't want to be a marketer. But if your product is good for people, then it's inherently good for the world. So you have a moral eth ethical responsibility to sell your fucking course. Yeah. One time when I was, I was in, I was in Miami and I, and the, the cool thing about Twitter is you could hang out with people like so ahead of you, which was super cool. So I met up with this guy in Miami. We had, we had dinner and the guy has sold like a hundred mil online. And I've always been struggling with this idea that doing like uh, outbound hurts the brand. And I always had to like, I don't want to send the ups, right? It's like maybe one day it's all going to be inbound. And I asked him because, you know, he was a pretty big business. Uh, well, do you think outbound hurts the brand? And he just stops at me. He just stops and he looks at me and he goes, bro, do you know, do you have any idea how Salesforce grew? I'm like, no, bro. The guys will buy all the taxis at events and the cities that their competition were holding events in. They would buy all the taxi drivers. They would trade them on the Salesforce product. And on the way from the airport to the hotel, these taxi people would promote Salesforce. Fuck your thing. Like, it, yeah. it doesn't hurt the brand. You could just sell your thing if it's good. Yeah. Like, oh, that, that put it at ease for me. I was like, oh, I'm good. It's cool. This is something I've just recently started to think about. Like, I, I, didn't, I, haven't, done, I haven't done cold DM in like six months. But I started to realize by being, because I've been taking LinkedIn a bit more serious, most of these eight and nine figure corporations are doing outbound cold, like cold outbound still to this day. It's because it's proven, right? It's proven. Yeah. So like, why do, I, why do we have this ego? And I got this from Twitter. I've been ingrained in Twitter. So like, I feel like I learned it from Twitter somehow, but it might just be me. Um, I stopped doing. Yeah, you cold. feel like you're above. I'm above DMs. cold, right? Like I'm, I'm above right. cold DM. Like I'm all inbound. Like I'm above cold. I'm like, but all of the best, even billion dollar corporations advertise billions and billions. Like the the biggest companies in the Fort, Fortune 500 advertise. So who am I to be like? I'm referral and inbound only. 
Yeah. Who the fuck am exactly. I? Like, who the fuck am I? <laughs> People feel like doing Alba hurts the brand. Dude, you have no fucking brand. 